Well, hello and good day. Hope that this video is finding you in good health and in good spirits. Today, I want to do a personality check on Justice Clarence Thomas. Now, last week, I shared a tarot reading that I did with a news spread, for me, anyways, for kind of trying to suss out aspects of people's personalities. And I did it on Justice Samuel Alita. A viewer request came in that I try Clarence Thomas. And of course, more than glad to do so because I'm putting this particular spread to the, the empirical test and see how I like it. And that's going to be require several rounds of trying with different people. And I'm going to put a lot of them up because I'm looking for feedback from you guys as to whether you think this is useful or whether it's garbage or whatnot. Anyways, on to the topic at hand, which is Justice Clarence Thomas, and he is the longest serving Associate Justice in the court right now. Uh, he was appointed in 1991 after a very raucous and controversial confirmation hearing. I, I remember it well because partway through his confirmation, one of his colleagues, uh, now legal professor Anita Hill, accused him of having sexually harassed her. And of course, it was the 90s, and she had needed 8 by 10 color glossy photos and videotape of him harassing her before anybody would have believed her. Well, you know, women. You never know with women. Those were the times. Justice Thomas is very hard to read because he doesn't say much in court. I think he went 21 years before he ever made a question or something in the legal briefings. He's, um, well, he's an interesting character. He's been married since uh, 1987 to Ginny, Ginny Thomas. Ginny Thomas of coup plotting fame. And Justice Thomas does not feel that having his wife as part of the people that were urging the administration to coup harder on January the 6th, he should have to recuse himself from any of those cases that are associated with it. And don't ask me to make it make sense, because it doesn't. Different deck today that we're do using. It's a new one for me, and this is the Reverse Scale Tarot by Michelle Tamapovich. And it's she's one of the artists that works with Pentagram Publishing. There will be a video, a review down the road here. It's actually filmed, but I use these to pop in when I, I need that filler. So, down to brass tacks with Justice Thomas. And once again, this is a 10 card reading. It's very much like a Celtic cross with a few modifications and I'll go through the steps of it and what each of the cards positions means until we all get this thing down pat, okay? So first position is the central characteristic and for Justice Thomas, we have the Page of Swords. Now, Page of Swords, not ever surprising to find in any of these kind of professions where legal, anything to do with it, because it, it's about ideas and that love of learning. And that is just part and parcel of what judges do. So this is a card that's about ideas, communication, being able to put it, the search for the truth, and an enthusiasm. And this like this whole idea of being curious about learning. Well, that is a judge's job description. And in this case, it is crossed by the Ace of Swords. And the Ace of Swords, of course, is about clarity and truth and thinking through new ideas. And again, like all judges have that ability to apply logic. Sometimes they apply it a little weirdly, but there is a logical sequence that you can follow. They're trained in this. This is, you know, their bread and butter. The next comment is we have is the influences of the past. And in this case, we have the Nine of Pentacles, but it's in a reverse position. And... This is a card, Nine of Pentacles, when it's reversed, is about 
you know, your sense of self-worth, it's all bound up into your sense of self-worth being around you own materialism. It's this, you work hard, but there is this longing for the stuff that other people have, right? Like feeling that you're always being shortchanged, that you are entitled to the good and they're just outside your grasp. Justice Thomas, it is fair to say, grew up in a poor family and very much, and he obviously did very well. He, he did well academically. He went through, he went to Harvard Law School. He had a respectable career prior to being appointed to the bench. Like the man worked hard and he got where he got in life because he's very, very bright. Goals of the future here, we have the King of Pentacles. And again, we get this whole idea about like physical security as being very important, this prosperity, this you know, kind of this paternalism, looking after those that are part of his circle. He's very hard working and it is, but the motivating drive is this whole idea of prosperity and security that is associated with like material wealth, material comfort. In the unconscious thoughts, we have the star card. And the star card is a card that's about hope and inspiration and having uh, faith. Things are going to get better. Things are going to be rejuvenated. Your wishes are going to peace manifestation, healing, all of those kind of good things. This is the the desire of the star card. And so, I mean, you have somebody who deep down inside, despite the fact he always looks really grumpy, has a strong hope. Hope is a part of his psyche. And this could be interesting because in conscious thoughts, we have the nine of swords. And nine of swords is kind of the exact opposite of that star card in that it's a card that's about nightmares, anxiety, anguish, you know, worry, and being despaired. So to me, it's really interesting that we have these two cards sitting next to each other. Unconscious thoughts, we have the star with all its thoughts about hope and peace and optimism and faith. And then the conscious thoughts, we have the Nine of Swords, which is about nightmares, anxiety, anguish, and worries. This is a very conflicted mind, really being torn in two directions. Now, his public facing, the Eight of Cups. Eight of Cups can indicate that there is a dramatic change. And well, certainly he has been a dramatic change from what you expect a Supreme Court justice to be. He is not a judicious man, and he is certainly not upstanding in the ethics department. And I mean, he's a liar. He lies on all his forms about what he's supposed to report. So yeah, and those are not behaviors that we expect. So there's a dramatic change. So this is the abandonment and kind of letting go of norms and just walking away. These don't serve me, I'm walking away. And we have in the private face, we find the King of Swords and he is in a reverse position. And that is not a good sign because the King of Swords, that's his private face. And when it's reverse, is about cruelty and abuse of power. Well, I think, I think he, I think that rings true. I mean, it really does. He he has a very strong chip on his shoulder. Um, he's resentful. He's resentful that he got appointed to the Supreme Court. I mean, it's it's really bizarre and always has been. Public fears, things that he is worried about being part of the public, think, desires and fears. And we have the Sun card. Sun card course is about full illumination. There's a lot more buried here. There's a lot more going on with Jenny Thomas than what has been part of the public record. And there's a lot more behind this corruption than what has 
trickled out in ProPublica and a couple of other places, right? This is something, and he's fearful that this is going to come to light. Literally, the sun is going to reveal all. So that sun card might have a lot to do with that eight of cups that we had in public facing position, right? That whole idea of walking away or sudden abandonment. It's no longer works. And in private, private desires and fears. We have the Queen of Wands. This is a kind of a woman who is very competent and vivacious and very charismatic, very sociable, very sociable. And I just guessing, but what's call, calling to mind is Jenny Thomas. He is very, very devoted to his wife. But overall, what am I getting from this reading with reference to his personality? He's very motivated by money. That, that whole. But it's just not money. He is motivated by status and the type of esteem he feels for people that are fabulously wealthy, people that have the kind of pull that Harlan Crow and whoever else his benefactors are. That's what motivates him more than a bank balance. That, that whole idea of the pentacles, materialism, envy, he doesn't feel worthy and is resentful because he doesn't feel worthy and he feels that he's being looked down upon people you look at some of the speeches that he has made uh in reference to like at the time of his confirmation hearing we're talking back in 1991 very much this attitude that i'm being picked on and i think he's had to deal with i mean there's a whole group of people who would argue that he, he shouldn't be on the bench and then he only has that position because they needed a token black person for it. And if that's something that you have grown up with, every one of your achievements has been put down because of your sex or because of your race. You didn't really earn it like everybody else did. You know, that kind of poisonous energy chipping away at you yeah, that would make anybody bitter. And I really think that this is where a lot of that idea of envy that is coming from, you can't help it, right? Like, yeah, I get it. I totally get it. He is very, very conscious about material wealth. And uh, you don't you don't make that kind of money if you're sitting on the Supreme Court and you're playing it straight. So he's got people like Harlan Crow and you'll never convince me that that's just out of the goodness of their hearts. And it comes right down to it. He is not a nice man, right? That whole private face of the King of Swords in reverse position and that, you know, this real strong bend towards cruelty for the sake of cruelty and abuse of his power as a Supreme Court Justice. And I think we've got that in spades. I don't know what they're going to do about it, but here we are. Here we are. And, you know, finally, I have a feeling that there is more to this Supreme Court story yet. And I would not be surprised that we don't see the full illumination of the sun coming out and cracking out more than just Clarence Thomas. I mean, we have Clarence Thomas on his grift and his lies. We've got Samuel Alito with his grift and his lies. And we've got John Roberts with his ineffectualness and the fact that his wife makes millions of dollars every year as, you know, legal recruiting. But it's, once again, it's influence peddling and cashing in on your political connections. And her political connection is she's married to the Supreme Court Chief Justice. So that is being monetized in the Roberts household. So I think American people are going to have enough of this and it is going to come to light, but it's not going to be shortly. I think we're going to have to wait into well into the next congressional season. It's not going to happen this year for sure. Anyway, so that's my look at Justice Thomas and 
let me know in the comments down below what you think of this kind of reading and I'll also have the link to the reading in the in the show notes for those of you who'd like to explore it on your own it's by Esotero and like I said just experimenting with it this is our second one and it's given me a little more insight into Justin Thomas I find myself not being quite so impatient with him but not completely like I haven't lost my mind yet working on it on that note because i feel myself starting to waffle here (laughs) i will talk to you later bye bye for now